Senior White House officials are racing to defend Vice President Harris amid reports of Harris being linked to a toxic work environment. Get that. White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain told Axios, quote, in a statement, the president's trust and confidence in her is obvious when you see them in the Oval Office together. Then Biden's senior advisor, Cedric Richmond, always been a little fuzzy with the truth, also chiming in saying, quote, it's a whisper campaign designed to sabotage her. Joining us now, Reagan biographer and presidential historian Craig Shirley. Craig, <laughs> welcome, first of all, Hi, with all of those accusations Hi. against Vice President Harris. You know, who are we supposed I mean, I know who we believe and who we don't believe, but what do you think is really going on behind the scenes? We have so many reports now of Harris's staff leaking. How important is that? Staff leaking that it's, it's a, a SH show behind the scenes in the vice president's office. You know, we both know after years of uh, observing politics and being involved in politics that when you read something that's a rumor innuendo in Washington, it turn, often turns out to be true. Uh, I suspect she is a very uh, uh, unfair woman to work for, not tough, because tough would be respectful. Uh, I, I, she, her mood sh shifts a lot, as you notice in her interviews. She giggles like a little girl. Uh, I, I think she probably has very low morale problems with her staff, and it leads to uh, naturally leads to infight. And look, they can't even get her organized to go to the border. She's supposed to be in charge of the border, and she's only she only went there months after she was named the border czar, which is some, some you know it's pretty nonsensical actually. You know. Um President Biden, on January 20th, when he was sworn in, said that his White House, the White House, will have unity. And if there's any sort of animosity or anything negative happening with any staffers in, in the White House, that includes the vice president's office, it's in the White House, uh, that they would be let go. What happens when yes. the vice president herself is the one causing the discord in the White House? Well, well, I, I, I hope that he takes her to the woodshed. Uh, and, and straightens her out, as vice presidents have had to do that in the past, when vice presidents strayed from the, from the, uh, from the message, from the dogma. Uh, you know, this never happened. I was part of the Reagan administration. This never happened with, when George Bush was vice president to Ronald Reagan. The staff was loyal to Bush, and Bush was loyal to Reagan, and there was never any deviation from that, from that course. From 1981 right up to 1989, there was only uh, a little bit of leaking at the end, but otherwise it was a pretty smooth operation, I must say, is that it was pretty harmonious. Everybody knew why they were there. Everybody respected and, and admired both Reagan and, uh, and Bush. Uh, and it was not, it wasn't a, a comedy of errors the way this uh, administration seems to be today. Which one, uh, tell us, you're the historian here, which one, which White House had the president having to take the vice president's side and say, hey, get, get your act together. Oh, Eisenhower had to do that with uh, Nixon. Uh, FDR had to do that with John Nance Garner. Uh, Woodrow Wilson didn't even talk to his, pres his vice president, Thomas Marshall, for a year and a half. Uh, they were very estranged, uh, according to reports. So they've been, and of course, uh, Lincoln and Andrew Johnson were, uh, were estranged as well. Not that they were together all that long before his, his unfortunate assassination, but uh, he, he never met with Lincoln while he was vice president. So uh, there have been many times where uh, vice presidents had to be taken to the woodshed uh, by the president and straightened out, uh, you know, Andrew Jackson and his vice president, uh, you know, he he resigned the, the pro vice presidency to go back to South Carolina to yep. uh, debate nullification of uh, Southern tariffs. So, so it's right, right. numerous. Hey, Craig, Craig, I want to get I want to get this next topic because I only have a couple of minutes. So we can shift gears to the president and Biden. He continues to tout sure. some economic growth during his speech, but what does he actually say? Yeah. Take a listen to this. I know. I know. The last time the economy grew at this rate was in 1984, and Ronald Reagan was telling us it's morning in America. Well, it's getting close to afternoon here. The sun is coming out. Okay, Craig, I'm really trying to figure out what the heck he's talking about. I remember morning in America's speech. I, yeah, what is that? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's just another senior moment. He's acting like the men's room attend the, in a hotel and instead of the president of the United States. He doesn't make any sense. He just babbles. Uh, doesn't. He doesn't put. Yeah, the look. It doesn't make any sense. 
Morning no, in America, to... Reagan. So it was. It was a, it, it, Carter. It was depressed, and it was. He he would come to the to, to his speeches, and it'd be awful and depressing. Right. Reagan said, "It's right. morning in America. Time to wake up, and things were better." Yes. What the heck is he talking I... about, Biden? Nobody things were knows. great under Trump. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. He's going to be used as a case study in future history classes, political science classes, of a model of a failed president, much the way Jimmy Carter has become a model in uh, political science classes of a failed president. You know, when, when the term, the presidency was too big for one man came into vogue was during the, uh, during the Carter presidency. And I think we can say that again, the presidency is too big for, for Joe Biden. Of course, that, that went out of vogue after Reagan was elected. Nobody stopped it being used, but obviously yeah. th this guy yeah. is mystified by his job. He doesn't know what he's doing and, he, and he's scaring the heck out of all of us. The, the most ridiculous, Craig, the most ridiculous part of that of that that comment by Biden is that a lot of the malaise under Carter was because of the, because of the skyrocketing inflation. And exactly. this is exactly and exactly what Biden rate. is doing in this and the, and, the, and the interest rates. But, but you need to raise interest rates to, to tamp down the inflation. And Biden's yes. going to have to do that. He is setting himself up to be Carter 2.0. Yes. And then he went ahead. It just pointed it, pointed right at, right at the, high, the target high gas himself. Prices, high gas prices, low, low morale in the United States, low respect for the president of the United States. His numbers are underwater. Last poll I saw, he was under 50%, yeah. and he's only months into his presidency. Where is he going to be in two years? He's going to be more senile. Yeah, he's yeah, going to be more babbling, and we're all going to be shaking our heads saying, what, what ride are we on here? Yeah, Craig Shirley, re really appreciate your time. Reagan biographer, by the way, one of the best presidents ever, ever to step into this country. Thank you so much, Craig. You bet, Eric. Have a good 4th of July. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.